Welcome back everybody. How great to see you once again. I am in Belarus. Welcome to Grodno. So what is Grodno? Grodno is a city of about 350,000 people that lies in Belarus. And the reason that I've decided to come here is because it's five days visa free. So it's another one of these places that you can come to Belarus uh, easier. And this is a special regime to come to this city and this city only. You can get banned if you leave Grodno, apparently, I've been told. Uh, so yeah, you definitely have to respect uh, the territorial limits um, if you want to come here for five days and come back to Belarus again without any issues. And uh, yeah, so let's go together and I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what the city looks like. So here I have Lenin. I think that's quite common in Belarus. And still in parts of the former Soviet Union, you see these Lenin statues. Not anymore in Ukraine. They kind of decided to dump Lenin symbolically in the last few years. Привет. Ленина. Это большой площадь туда, да? А, налево. Налево это Ленина советская это туда, окей. Окей. Что ты думаешь? Хороший, хороший город, милый. Да. Много делать здесь или ничего? Ничего. Сегодня вечером где будет самое лучшее место? Где вечером будет самое лучшее? Там был вчера. Уже, уже знаю. Что ты делаешь сейчас? Чищу картошку. Чищу картошку. Welcome. I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a masterclass on how to make the national dish of Belarus. These are called draniki, and of course, first thing is to have potatoes. So I've already grilled those up. Gonna have myself some some eggs. You wouldn't be any. We would not be in Belarus if we did not potatoes. Something that they have in common with the Irish. And then, of course, smetana, ubiquitous here in the former Soviet Union. And got some oil, Not really, yeah, I guess to, to fry everything. And of course, because I love the bison that you would have seen my video in breast, I'm gonna wash that down a little bit of vodka, just just one or two of them. We put them katovets. So these are the fruits of our labor. Draniki, Belarus's national dish. We have lots of smetana to go with it. So now I've got to try out these draniki, right? What are they going to taste like? First time homemade draniki, Belarus's national dish. Mm -hmm. Simple, but tasty. Potatoes, egg, flour, and some smetana. So, thumbs up for uh, Belarus and its homemade cuisine. Well, normally you need a visa to visit Belarus, but there are these three regimes that you can uh, take advantage of. One of the a little bit of complications is that you can't really be too spontaneous. You have to order the visa few documents, uh, through a tour, through an agent, at least the evening before, if you're lucky to get it on such short notice. And you need to have everything in a line. So you need to know, you know, obviously what date you're arriving, uh, how you're arriving, you need to have your point of entry, and uh, you need to have organized your tour. And you need to have, of course, your address for your accommodation where you're gonna be staying here in Grodno. So that means you have to have all those things organized before you can, uh, before you can actually pay for and get these of your documents. So 
So here I am at the train station in Grodno. So I'm close to the Polish-Lithuanian border. And this town actually is one of the few cities in Belarus that was not destroyed during the Second World War. So it actually still has a lot of the old buildings, uh, especially in the city center when you drive around. If you walk around, you're gonna see a lot of older buildings than you're gonna see in other cities in Belarus or in the region in general. Now there's a river that goes through the city, that's the river in Neyman. And what is really interesting is about half the city or the region is ethnic, actually ethnic Polish. Uh, so that's like interesting because we're near the border obviously with Poland, but the, the ethnic Poles happen to speak Belarusian, about half of them, uh, while actually in Belarus, the Belarusians uh, in general they all speak Russian today. So it's kind of this odd <laughs> Uh, phenomenon that the Poles speak Belarusian and the Belarusians speak Russian. What next? The Germans are going to start speaking Polish? I know it's a, it's a little bit crazy, but that's because um, Belarusians have moved um, they are closer to Russia and have, where well, they're in the Union with Russia, of course, and it's more common today to speak Russian than Belarusian, especially in the cities. But the ethnic Poles, they kind of split in terms of speaking either Belarusian or Russian, as they're today their native tongue. Obviously, historically, they spoke Polish originally. So that's just something I found really interesting and uh, in the city itself. So it is time for me to take the train to Warsaw. I have about, looking at the clock, about 20 minutes to clear customs and passport controls. I'm gonna have to take all my stuff now and go through that procedure. Actually do it here in the train station uh, in Grodno. You don't do it on the border per se. This is actually the border control here when you arrive in the city. So something else also to be aware of. Um, so give yourself a little bit of time. Another thing that you need to give yourself and maybe a little bit of time is I used the taxi voucher that came with my visa-free documents for the last trip here uh, down to the train station and you know, the taxi drivers, they won't probably have seen this voucher before, this coupon. And it just meant that we had to chat with the dispatcher on the radio for a couple of minutes. Uh, so if you were rushing to, you know, catch your whatever happens to be train, plane, bus, whatever, just factor that in. Give yourself an extra 15 minutes if you're going to use the taxi voucher. If you enjoyed this video, Grodno, Belarus, visa free for five days, then Give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot to me to see those likes and it also lets me know that you're enjoying the content and I should make more of these. Uh, of course, uh, there's that little red button to subscribe, but you probably already subscribed, I think at this stage of us so many times. Um, whack that notification bell beside the subscribe button for sure so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Been quite regular recently, so lots of great content to come from this region uh, in Eastern Europe in the next few months, especially over the summer. I'm planning to be in this region in Ukraine and Belarus and Russia for the summer. Um, and in fact, I've been working on a new course, a new premium uh, video course, uh, how to survive a trip to Eastern Europe. So if you're interested in traveling Eastern Europe, uh, definitely want to be on my mailing list for that. And there's actually a little free gift if you go down there and subscribe by email. So there's a link in the description below the video. Definitely do that if you're not on my mailing list for travel. Um, there's a little training course there, a free one, everything is free uh, um, for if you sign up to the mailing list. So make sure you go and do that. Um, so that's going to be it for me. I'm actually going to take a little bit of break from Eastern Europe. I shouldn't be candid about that. For the next six weeks, I'm going to be in Spain and Italy, uh, working on different projects. But after that, for the summer, I'm going to be back in this greater region. So I look forward to seeing you guys, all your smiling faces out there on YouTube who are passionate about traveling, learning languages, and having a more local experience in Eastern Europe. So it's this Vidanya from Grodna, Belarus.